Good morning, everyone. It's Monday, March 23rd. I hope everyone had a, a productive weekend. And now we're at uh, the beginning of the week, back to school, back to work, in whatever capacity that's possible. And uh, I think we should create a special bracha for whoever invented Wi-Fi, because it's coming in quite handy. Of course, for our children, imagine if they didn't have the ability to have online learning and for us to telecommute to work and to be able to, con to talk to one another like this, uh, I think is uh, very, very helpful. So again, I, I really appreciate all the feedback. Keep it coming. And uh, before I get to today's Dvar Torah, I just want to go over the schedule for Eitz Chaim for this week. Uh, we will have tomorrow, Tuesday, it was a jam-packed day, we'll have a regular 1030 women's class. Again, we'll be focusing on Pesach ideas. And then we're going to have two time Zoom sessions with Erica Brown uh, dealing with uh, the called Moody Jews. The first is going to be a session on anger. That's going to be Tuesday afternoon at three. Please look below under the video part of the email for the exact links and the schedule. And then, of course, Tuesday evening, we'll be having our Gemara Shear. I know the men's Seder was planned for tomorrow evening, uh, but that will be changed to next week in an online format. You'll have all the information coming up on that. There's no need to register or anything like that, uh, but we'll have our online format. Obviously, there's not going to be any food. Wednesday, I'll be giving my uh, prep share for Pesach of those especially who are making Pesach or haven't done it for a very, very long time. Um, please, uh, you'll get the Zoom information for that. Please, you can email me questions in advance, and I'd be happy to address them or on the spot. And then Thursday, we'll have our second Moody Jews session with Erica Brown on Thursday afternoon. Um, I wanted to uh, share the Dvar Torah again. We're the, during the week, we're sending Dvar Torahs about uh, Pesach, and I'm sharing with you some of my favorite Haggadahs. Um, you're all familiar with NCSY, and I hope that uh, we, we have our youth take full advantage of NCSY. We have a wonderful NCSY coordinator in our area, Mary Patinsky, uh, who's doing a fantastic job. She goes to all of the schools, and she enriches the Jewish lives of all of our uh, younger generation. And one thing before I get to the Haggadah is there's something that NCSY called, puts out. It's called the box. It's very nicely packaged. You, you open it up inside, and inside there are three things three stacks of cards which deal with would you rather moral dilemmas or conversation cards we uh we actually pulled it out this week at the shabbos table uh, at both meals uh, both big meals and it actually went over very well it spurred a lot of good conversation a lot of good back and forth and especially during these times when we're kind of looking for things to do almost uh it's very very handy so you can get that online and the Haggadah i want to share with you today came out last year is this Haggadah called just one also published by NCSY. And if the fine print reads, one thought-provoking idea on each section of the Passover Seder. Beautifully done, beautiful graphics. I mean, if you could just sort of look at the way the, the pages are laid out and very large and beautiful. So I want to share with you this piece, Anyachatz, which is uh, very, very uh, important in today's day to day. So Yachatz, of course, we know is the step when we break the middle matzah and we leave the larger half of the afikomen. And, the, and, and the, the headline here reads, Wreck yourself before you check yourself. Open-hearted and broken-hearted self-reflection. Why do we break the middle matzah? The Talmud says that just as someone in poverty only has crumbs, on Passover we eat the bread of paupers. Of paupers. We call that lechem oni. Two concepts to consider when breaking your matzah. Number one, food insecurity, which is something that I think we can all relate to today. Anyone who's made a trip to the uh, supermarket and realizes the sort of panic that has set in and this fear. And, and when we think about people who really live with this regularly of food insecurity, Passover is the night of freedom. Part of the blessing of freedom is having the expansiveness of mind to think about those who have not yet experienced true freedom. While eating your broken matzah, Think about people who don't have the freedom you may have right now. You might not know anyone who has no food, but more people than you think struggle with food insecurity, meaning they don't always have enough food or they may not have access to healthy food. Is there a way that you can help those who are food insecure? Again, we don't have to wait for Pesach to come to this realization. We could think about this right now. The second paragraph reads, is humility on your moral bucket list? Broken matzah is not exactly a luxurious meal. Eating the food of poverty is an exercise in humility. It is appropriate time to reflect on cultivating your own humility. 
David Brooks, in his New York Times column in April 2015, developed the concept of a moral bucket list, which he explained as the experiences one should have on the way towards the richest possible inner life. At the top of his moral bucket list was humility, and this is what he wrote. The humility shift. We live in the culture of the big me. The meritocracy wants you to promote yourself. Social media wants you to broadcast a highlight reel of your life. Your parents and teachers were always telling you how wonderful you were. But all the people I've ever deeply admired are profoundly honest about their own weaknesses. They have identified their core sin, whether it's selfishness, the desperate need for approval, cowardice, hard-heartedness, or whatever. They have traced how that core sin leads to the behavior that makes them feel ashamed. They have achieved a profound humility, what has best been defined as an intense self-awareness from a position of other-centeredness. Stay tuned. More ideas to shift towards other-centeredness coming up soon. Again, that's this Haggadah, just one, which I came out last year, which I found to be incredible. I think if there's anything that we've learned during this very difficult period, and let's please keep in mind those people that are really struggling, is humility. We want to go out and do everything that we want to do, but we're just simply not able to. We're fighting our urges to go out and be part of the world, and the best thing that we could do is to remain removed from the world tremendous amount of humility. So uh, let's hope that we'll come through this together and we'll have a new appreciation for all of our talents and for everything that we have available to us on a regular basis, uh, which we cannot enjoy at this time. Again, I hope everyone has a wonderful day and we will be in touch. Bye.